I'm attorney Laura Anthony, founding partner of Legal and Compliance, a full service corporate securities and business transactions law firm. Today is the first in a four part securities law cast in which I am going to discuss the direct public offering process, commonly referred to as a DPO, including the filing of an S1 registration statement. The two primary methods of going public are either through a reverse merger with an existing public company or through a public offering. A public offering is accomplished through the filing of an S1 registration statement. A public offering can either be underwritten by a broker dealer, placed on a best efforts basis by a broker dealer, or placed directly by the issuing company itself without the assistance of a broker dealer. Smaller or development stage issuers generally cannot attract or do not want to pay for broker dealer involvement and instead many issuers are choosing to self-place their public offerings. Management of these companies and companies considering doing a public offering transaction have a desire to understand the required disclosures and content of a registration statement and the process itself. Section 5 of the Securities Act of 1933 makes it unlawful to offer or sell securities without a valid registration statement unless an exemption is available. Companies desiring to offer and sell securities to the public with the intention of creating a public market or going public must file a registration statement containing all material information concerning the company, the securities being offered, and the offering itself with the SEC and provide a copy of that filed registration statement to all prospective investors. The registration statement again is a Form S-1. In addition to understanding the basic required content and information in a Form S-1, issuers need to understand the sale process and what and when they can communicate offers to buy securities and other information related to their business during the process. There are three regulated time periods in the DPO process. The first is the pre-filing period. The pre-filing period begins when the issuer decides to make an offering. During this period, counsel prepares the registration statement and audits are completed. The second period is the waiting or quiet period. During this period, or this period is the time from the filing of the registration statement until it is declared effective. During this time, the issuer can engage in limited marketing, offers only, no sales, of the offering through the use of the filed registration statement, which also must clearly state that it is not the final document and has not yet been declared effective. And the third time period is the post-effective period. This is the period from the time the registration statement is declared effective through the time that the securities are, are sold and the, and the offering is completed. In addition to disclosure and regulations related to the offering during all three periods, marketing and public communications by the issuer is restricted. The SEC regulations are designed to prevent an issuer from priming the market by engaging in promotional efforts during the S-1 process. That's the entire process. The S-1 itself is regulated by four primary regulations. The first is Regulation C. Regulation C contains the general requirements for preparing and filing the Form S-1 including registration, regulations and procedures related to the treatment of confidential information, amending a registration statement prior to effectiveness, amending the registration statement after effectiveness, and the plain English rule. The second is Regulation ST. Regulation ST requires that all registration statements, exhibits, and documents be electronically filed through the SEC's EDGAR system. The third is Regulation SK. Regulation SK sets forth in detail all the disclosure requirements for the different sections of the S-1. Regulation SK is the who, what, where, when, and how requirements. The final regulation governing the S-1 document is Regulation SX. 
Regulation SF sets forth the requirements with respect to the form and content of financial statements to be filed with the SEC. Registration SX includes general rules applicable to the preparation of financial statements for all financial statements and specific rules pertaining to particular industries and types of businesses. I'm securities attorney Laura Anthony, founding partner of Legal and Compliance. Should you have any questions about the information we've just covered, please visit securitieslawblog.com or contact me directly. Inquiries of a technical nature are always encouraged.